here we have one of my uh, GR1000 transmissions. And that's what I'm going to be putting into my SC300 since I have a GR1000 sitting here on the floor um, that goes in my personal white car. Um, what we're going to do here is get this transmission ready to go. And there's three things that we're going to need to do. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to modify this reverse lockout solenoid so that we can get it into reverse without having to use any electronics. Electronics are annoying. The next thing we're going to do is install a plug here using one of my plug kits, which uh, my plug kits are over here. And I'll show you one of these. So this is one of my plug kits. And you can see here it comes with a billet plug with a bolt and that'll plug into there. And then it comes with all the pigtails for all the other sensors in the transmission. This is a mechanical sensor for the old school guys and we don't use those, so we plug those. And then the third thing we're gonna need to do, uh, for most Supras and the IS300 and SC300, you have to cut a little bit of the, um, the stock bell off right here. And you can see how I have this pretty thin right here. And that's fine, it's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, but normally this sticks out, you know, um, about maybe another quarter inch, and that can cause some clearance issues. So this bolt, you can see here, it's at about, if you're looking at the front of the trans, it's at about the three o'clock position. So that's the one you're gonna wanna shave off there with a grinder, uh, one of these guys here. You can use one of these. Cut off wheel on a grinder, and that should, it should take like five seconds to cut that off. And then just clean it up a little bit so you don't cut yourself on it. Um, but that, like I said, it doesn't ruin any of the integrity of the trans or anything like that. Um, and then one thing to note is that on the GR1000s and the GR900s, I do this service for you. So you don't have to worry about this. But on the 700s, they come directly from Tremec. So this is one mod that you'll have to do on your own. So if you're looking at your T56 Magnum in the box, like it comes from the factory, you're going to see this large solenoid back near the output shaft. And this is the reverse lockout solenoid. Uh, this basically has an electric solenoid in it com combined with a spring to keep you from being able to get into reverse. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mod this thing so that you can get it into reverse by manhandling it and not have to install any kind of switches or electronics. So this is the solenoid itself. And right now you can't really see much because uh, everything's internally inside here. And what we're gonna do is remove that snap ring with a pair of snap ring tools. And then you'll be able to see that this nipple is held in place with a big spring. And uh, we're going to do some modifications to that spring to get it so that it's a little bit easier for us to uh, get the car to go into reverse. So this is what you get when you take the, the, the snap ring out. And you'll see that the spring here is on this plunger. And it's held in by another snap ring. So we're going to have to remove that snap ring. And then we're going to take a little bit off of this spring to give it a little less tension so that we can overpower it with the, like manhandle it basically to go into reverse. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, the easiest way to get that black snap ring off of this is just to put this uh, whole assembly in the vise and squeeze it tight a little bit and you'll see you get a little bit of gap there. And now I can just easily pull that snap ring off and then I'll be able to get access to the spring. One thing to mention uh, is those little snap rings right there, they tend to go flying. So <laughs> mine just flew across the room when I took this apart. So just remember that. Um, also, when we cut down this spring, what I usually use as a rule of thumb is 10%. Uh, but the easiest way to just say about 10% is to say right about where the top ring meets. So right in um, this general area, is where I usually cut All right, it. So here I cut the spring and you can kind of tell how much I cut off. Um, you can see I cut it right where they kind of intersected and I have one, pretty much one perfect ring is what I cut off. And then now you can see, now you can see how the spring looks and it's a little bit. Okay, so here is our uh, cut down spring reinstalled. You can see where it's cut there now. And I put the little spring back in there and put the snap ring back in. So now it's ready to be reinstalled and we'll go ahead and put this back in the transmission. And just like when I removed the ring, the, the vise is your best friend here to get that ring back in. So put the, 
put the whole unit in the vise and push down a little bit, give it a little bit of tension so the ring comes out easier. And then when you reinstall it again, put a little bit of tension on it so that the ring can go in easier. One thing that I forgot to mention is the standard shifter that comes with these transmissions. So this is the what I call the red Tremec shifter uh, that comes with the T56 Magnum from the factory. And you can see it's uh, it puts the shifter more forward. Um, and that's why we sell these relocation shifters. Uh, this is what we need to, to make these uh, transmissions fit properly into an SC300 and the Supra. So what you one thing you have to do is remove this uh, shifter. It's six bolts, half inch, pops right off. Put the sicky shifter on there, but make sure you silicone it first. Um, but that's uh, really it as far as the shifter install goes. It's really simple. All right, so here we have the transmission and it's pretty much ready to go. So step one is complete, which is putting the plug in. Step two is modifying the reverse lockout solenoid spring so that we can get it into reverse without any electronics. If you want electronics, go buy a GTR. Here's the shifter in place, siliconed, ready to go. And then the last step would be to modify the front case on the transmission so that we have clearance. Um, that should be it. In the next episode, I will be installing the clutch and showing you how to properly shim the hydraulic throttle bearing. So come back and watch the next episode.